The first reason why you should not be buying a home is if you do not have enough money saved up in your bank account. And when I talk about your savings, I'm not talking about your down payment. I'm talking about actual savings in reserves in your savings account in cash. That way, if something were to happen, you have money to fall back on. Now, typically, you want to have at least three months worth of expenses saved in your bank account. So if you're spending $5,000 a month, you want to have at least $15,000 a month extra in your savings account before you even consider being a homeowner. I used to be a real estate salesperson and I'm a real estate investor. And one thing about homes is uh, things break. And when things break, when you're the homeowner, you have to pay for it. I live in a northern home where it gets cold and it falls below freezing during the winter time. And one of the things about the cold winters is you can see the pipes, the plumbing pipes burst because of the cold. That's exactly what happened to a rental property of mine last year. I had a home where a tenant was living and everything was fine. They had the heat on, but it was so cold that underneath the house, under the crawl space, the pipes froze and they actually burst. This was an unexpected expense. Luckily, we were able to get the water turned off quickly because the water was spraying everywhere, but it cost us thousands of dollars to fix the damage and to fix the plumbing and to put in new insulation. That way this doesn't happen again. When you're a homeowner, you have to be prepared because pipes burst, they clog, windows break, ACs bust and furnaces go out. And when that happens, you need the cash to fall back on. And if you don't have any savings, then you're going to have to go into debt in order to fund these repairs just because you wanted to be a homeowner. Now you're paying interest to fix your window. Before you go out and start thinking about buying a home, I need you to first save some money. That way you can afford these emergencies when they come your way. The second reason why you should not buy a home is if you cannot afford, keyword afford, the down payment. So this point is not going to make my realtor friends or my banker friends very happy because there's a difference between being able to afford your down payment and just being able to make your down payment. If you go to a real estate agent and you tell them that you want to buy a home, they're going to try to find you the best home possible. Typically, the best home possible is also the biggest home possible. And coincidentally, the biggest home possible also gives your real estate agent the biggest check possible. So your real estate agent is in the business of trying to get you a home. Your banker's job is trying to get you finance for the home. So your banker, also like your real estate agent, does not get paid unless you actually buy the home. So your banker is going to try to do everything they can to get you a mortgage to buy a home, even if you can't necessarily afford the down payment because the bank has a very different definition of what it means to be able to afford a down payment. Your bank's goal is to become wealthy. It's not for you to become wealthy, it's for the bank to become wealthy. And the way the banks get rich is by lending you money and having you pay interest on this money for the rest of your life. So the bank is going to try to do whatever they can to give you a loan even if that's not necessarily the best thing for you. And your real estate agent's job is not to look out for your financial health. Your real estate agent's job is to find you a home and sell you that home. Your job is to be the one looking out for your wallet. And what a lot of people do is they rely on their real estate agent or they rely on their bank to tell them what they can afford. This is a big mistake. We saw this happen to an extreme during the 2008 crash because back then if you wanted to buy a home, you could qualify for a ninja home. Ninja stood for no income, no job, no assets. So if you didn't have a job and you didn't have an income stream and you didn't own anything to your name, you could still qualify for a mortgage. All you had to do was go into a bank and tell them that you wanted to get a mortgage and and they'd say, great, how much money do you want? So you tell them, I want $300,000. And they tell you, no problem. We will give you that $300,000. That way you don't have to put any money down. So no down payment required. And if you sign the papers today, we'll also give you a free TV. Nowadays, you can't walk into a bank and walk out with a $300,000 mortgage without showing your income or a job. However, banks are still going to try to do whatever they can to help you get a mortgage, even if you can't necessarily afford it. If you want to be able to afford your down payment, you need to be putting down 20% of the home's value as the down payment. Now, I know what you're thinking. 20%? Just pretty, that's a lot of money. If I want to buy a $300,000 home, that's $60,000. Yeah, I know. 20% is a lot of money. But if you want to be able to afford the down payment, then you got to be putting down 20%. If you don't put down 20%, then the bank is going to hit you with extra fees and higher interest rates and PMI just because you don't have enough money to afford a 20% down payment. If you're not able to put down 20%, then the bank is going to look at you like a riskier investment because when the bank loans out money, it's an investment. And so they look at your credit score and they look at how much money you put down and then they rate you as an investment. Are you a safe investment or a risky investment? If you're a risky investment, that means you're not putting down 20%, then the bank has to make up for the higher risk by charging you higher fees like a higher interest rate. So now if you don't have 20%, you're going to have to pay more money in interest just because you didn't have enough cash to afford this 20% down payment 
and the bank is also going to charge you something called PMI. PMI stands for private mortgage insurance. And essentially what it says is because you don't have 20% down, you don't have as much skin in the game, so you're more likely to walk away from your home. And if you walk away from your home, now the bank is going to have to foreclose on you and they're going to lose money. And so when you pay this PMI, you're buying insurance, not for yourself, but for the bank. So you're paying for the bank's insurance. That way, if you do walk away from the home, the bank is protected because now they have insurance that you're paying for. If you don't put down 20%, you're buying the bank's insurance. But you can avoid paying that extra fee if you just put down 20%. So when you have enough money to afford the down payment, now you can avoid paying PMI, you can avoid paying the higher interest rates, and you also have more equity in your home. If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love and while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide on how to start generating passive income for free. All you gotta do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling.